thank you everyone. My name is Anna and I am responsible for all roaming and connectivity provided by Tele2 IoT. And I am Niklas Lutén, I'm the head of product and technology. And you all know technology is always evolving with market dynamics in constant movement. And this is something that is especially true when it comes to IoT technology. This means that it is our responsibility to stay on top of these changes and to be prepared for them, but also to prepare you, our customers, for upcoming technology shifts. And right now, there are quite a few things happening on the technology side of things, and the most discussions that we're having, they are of evolutionary nature. So we know from this that you guys out there, all of you, you want to advance your expectations, and you want to understand what is coming down the road. So to give you an idea of what lies ahead, we will in a clear and simple way for these next 10 minutes guide you through our roadmap. Wait, 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 Anna. Are we really going to go through yet another boring roadmap? Can we do it in another way, you think? Okay, if you insist. Let's try something else. And you know what? That roadmap, it's not even ours. Okay then, so let's instead focus on the hottest topics that we are discussing right now together with our customers, partners and suppliers. First, let's look at something that is on everyone's mind but will soon be a thing of the past. The sunset of 2G and 3G. So the big question now is really why and when will 2G and 3G sunset? And Anna, this is really your area of expertise. So what more can you tell us about this? 2G and 3G are being retired so that we can build for the future. With this, we will have safer and more robust connectivity. And to add on here, this is a global trend. We see it on all continents and Tele2 is no different. In Sweden, 3G is currently being phased out and we'll, we expect it to close in end of 2024, while 2G will live until December 2025. And would it now be fair to call this something like an industry-wide technology shift? Isn't that really what we have here? Yes, yes it is. And we are aware of at least 30 partners across Europe that are closing down 2G and 3G in end of 2025. But now here comes the interesting part of this. This is, for the very first time, technology like this is being retired. And moving from these early technologies actually brings a lot of benefits and opportunities. It also opens the door for the very first time technologies that are IoT specific. And we are now, of course, referring to IoT specific technologies like NB-IoT and LTM. And you know, these are technologies that is both supporting existing use cases, which has been previously based on 2G and 3G, while they are also enabling completely new ones. These use cases, <clears throat> they are the low power usage and deep sleep mode that gives a very long battery life. It can give up to 10 years of connectivity from one single battery. And this is efficiency that is good for your cost base as well as the environment. And as one more added benefit, when it comes to NBIT and LTM, these are technologies that is even better suited for indoor coverage and remote areas compared to 2G. But what about the future then? What other evolutions within technology? can we expect? Niklas, you got the big picture. What else can we foresee? Well, you know, when we discuss the future with you guys, our customers, there is actually one specific topic and that we discuss the most and that you ask the most about. And that area, believe it or not, is actually SIM cards. And this is an area where there is a lot of movement in the market and I'm proud and I'm very happy to say that we are doing quite a lot of development also on our side. Looking at this large screen behind me, we can see that SIMs have gone through quite an evolution. First, we have the full-size SIM, large as a credit card. Then came the standard SIM, then we have micro and nano, and then finally the embedded SIM. And this is a true classic of all hardware, where it naturally becomes smaller and smaller. And now, I believe that all of you are thinking one and the same thing. 
does the size really matter? <laughs> and you know what? It might actually does. As said, hardware becomes smaller and smaller. And we think that the next step in this evolu evolution would be to completely remove the separate component part. With this, you have an integrated SIM, also called the iSIM. And if you now think about it, and maybe now more from a personal perspective, I think at least that it was quite an idiotic idea from the very beginning to have a chip that reads from another chip. But you know what, sure, I guess everything has to start somewhere, right? So now you're probably asking yourself, what problems do we really solve by integrating the SIM? So the iSIM, it erases a bunch of things from the supply chain as it is today. So forget about shipping. No shipping at all whatsoever of any SIM cards and no extra processes at a factory to plug in a SIM or even to solder a SIM. And let's think one step further. The SIM will already be integrated in the IoT module that you are using. You're right about that. And uh, we are actually quite happy to say that we're already in a proof of concept stage with one of our customers around iSIM as we speak. Keep in mind though, we are in the very early phases of this development. The iSIM doesn't yet offer all of the advantages that you get from the premium SIM, the EU ICC. And if you look at the availability of the market today, there's actually nothing better than the EU ICC. And the EU ICC, it offers you lots of benefits. And one of them is the flexibility, where you can switch profiles on the SIM card, and you can do that over there. Yet another benefit of the EU ICCs you get from us is that the hardware, that is the most robust you can ever find. And because it is so robust, we call our premium, we call our, pre, we, we call our EU ICC premium industrial. And this is also why we recommend it, because it's the most future proof that you can get. Niklas, why is this? So first and foremost, the EU ICC and the premium industrial part, it was created specifically for IoT to ensure a long lasting solution. Secondly, it can handle the toughest conditions you can imagine, including extreme temperatures, shocks, vibrations, corrosions. Yeah, you get the picture by now. And the way that we work with EU ICC at tele it it's pretty unique. We can switch between profiles, both automatically, but also on demand. And also, instead of letting the SIM do all of the hard work, we have actually centralized this functionality to let our remote SIM provisioning machines, our RS RSP, to do all of the heavy lifting for this. This has now enabled us to come to move in something like a completely different direction compared to our competitors. And for example, based on this technology and solution, we have uh, launched a product which enables natural roaming in Sweden when coming from abroad. Very well. You know, all of this development that we're doing and that we're busy with all day long, those are designed to remove restrictions and to remove limitations. And if there is one thing, and only one thing, that we at Tele2 believe in, that is to enable a society of unlimited possibilities. We do believe that. And we really like to overcome restrictions. Another area that we often get questions about is accessing restricted markets. And these are markets where there are regulatory restrictions. And there are quite a few out there. We have Turkey, United Arab Emirates and Brazil as just a few examples. And the restrictions here, they are connected to permanently deployed IoT devices, meaning devices that are not meant to leave the country. And since our customers have a global mindset, more than 90% of our customers' deployments is outside of Sweden, these markets have a very high priority for us. And speaking about high priority, the past year, that is almost past now, we have put a lot of focus in being able to offer you extended access to this market. So, we are getting ready, and now we can ask ourselves which country is the first one out of the gate. It is Brazil, where we very soon can offer seamless permanent roaming. And if we now connect this back to the SIM cards and the UICCs we, uh, we discussed earlier, the solution we have, the seamless one, it wouldn't have been possible without our great UICC solutions. 
For us, this is a bit of a dream coming true, where you can combine regulatory difficulties together with the evolution. And if you're now wondering when we're launching this, the answer is in Q1 2024, so just a few months away, and it will be available for you. So if Brazil has been a dream for a, quite a long time, let's talk about another dreamy subject. Let's talk about AI and combining it with IoT. And basically AI, it is no longer a dream. AI, it is a reality, and it's here to stay. And we are seeing lots of customers, and I would say more and more customers, combining the power of IoT with all the sensors out there, together with AI and machine learning in order to create some pretty cool and amazing solutions out there. We have customers combining AI and IoT for solutions around workplace safety, but also visitor flow. And later on stage, we will hear more about optimizing parking spaces from our customer Drifter World. And with their solution, parking attendants, paying machines and parking disks will no longer be needed. But more about that in just a short while. And speaking about AI, we have had it implemented in our IoT NOC operations team for a very long time. I speak many years now. So, I mean, from our side, we are ready and we are prepared and we would love to see more of these great technologies being brought together even more. So, that is a lot of information all at once. We'd love to discuss this and more with all of you in the Innovation Hub. Or if you have any questions, just reach out. We are here and ready to talk. So I guess before wrapping things up, let's go over to Johanna. Does our digital audience have any questions for us? Yes, they do, of course, and they're really liking the iSIM. A lot of thumbs up for that. But we have Friedrich, I think I pronounced it correctly, from Germany. He is about curious about the Volti and what we can expect. Okay, Volt, uh, um, Anna, do you mind? Take this one. Uh, yes, sure, sure. Uh, well, uh, Volta has had a quite rough start in the industry with a lot of regulatory difficulties as well as technologies not really working as expected. But however, from a roaming perspective, we are very happy right now that we started to roll out uh, roaming partners in a very high pace. So it, it's going the right direction. And are we right here, right now, ready to say when we are launching the full suit solution for it? I think it's a good idea. Go for it, Niklas. Okay, I go. Yes, you go. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I see lots of men in the crowd here today, and uh, I'm not the guy that wants to stereotype all of you, but I can imagine there is one specific day each year that might be a little bit troublesome to, to remember. I'm, of course, thinking about Valentine's Day. So this year, we will help you remember, and we'll be launching Volt, uh, the full suit solution for it, on 14th of February. <laughs> All right, so we have fantastic news uh, from Anna and Nicholas. Thank you very much for this beautiful insights. And I think that we not only are now a little bit smarter, but also we uh, have seen the most over-animated presentation in the history of humankind. So <laughs> congratulations on this one. Please, let's give a round of applause to Nicholas and Anna again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.